Hello everybody, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, we will continue our lesson. This is part two of Forces in Motion. Uh, please have your book with you, you take out notes, and any question related, uh, please feel free to ask. So that's why I have your book with you, so you can take out notes. Okay, so we studied about different kind of forces and we'll continue about that so we have friction and gravity let us say you throw a ball up in the air right so does the ball stay up forever no yes it comes back right so if uh, without the gravity now this is gravity which is actually bringing it down it's the force which is between the ball and the earth okay will let the ball fall back to the ground if there was no gravity the ball would eventually just fly off the earth now, it's actually sir isaac newton after whom the unit of force is named he researched gravity in the 1600s he believed that every object in the universe was pulling on every other object this theory is called the Newton's law of universal graviation uh, Newton said that the gravity depends on the masses of the objects and the distance between them two things the gravity depends on the mass the masses of those two objects and the distance between them so increasing the mass will increase the force and increasing the distance decreases the force okay how that happens let us see here gravitational force is actually smaller between two objects with small masses you see that the masses are small so the gravity is not going to be the gravitational force is not going to be that much but if the objects have a larger mass as you can see here the gravitational force is going to be larger the distance between these two objects as if it is increased the gravitational force pulling them together actually is reduced so this is uh, how the differences happen so the arrows here indicate the gravitational force between the objects okay you see that if the masses are small the gravity also will be small if the mass is larger gravitational force is going to be larger if the distance between two objects is increased the gravitational force pulling them is also reduced okay now most of you have been through uh, this slide when you go to the parks right for the slide to be fast you know that it should be very slippery right friction actually makes it difficult to slide on rough surfaces okay friction friction is what friction is the force that opposes the motion of one object moving past another friction uh, depends on the surfaces if the surface is smooth the friction is very low if you, there are smooth tiles or ceramics you know you can s slip on them and there is less friction there but if the surface is rough and there is high friction you need to have a lot you need for example these two boxes you moving same boxes one on the smooth surface so easy you can just push it but on the other hand if the friction if the surface is rough it means you have to apply a lot of force to push that because the force that is opposing the friction force is much other thing that friction depends on is uh, the mass for example 
uh, he have the friction was friction increases when surfaces are pressed together with you now friction also increases with weight of an object so if you see more weight something has more weight means friction will be more and if something has less weight friction is going to be less now, have you ever rubbed your hands just rub it now and you will uh, the friction between your hands actually is going to uh, generate heat right heat is created whenever there is a friction so just rub your hand now and you will feel that friction okay coming to air resistance uh, when an object moves through air the air uh, hits the object and slows it down uh, you see here the air resistance increases with velocity as the velocity increases you know, as you speed up the air resistance also increases but not the friction friction usually does not uh, increase with if the velocity increases the friction does not increases but the air resistance do okay uh, liquid also uh, have uh, air resistance that's why water can slow down a boat so this was air resistance when an object uh, moves through the air uh, the air hits the object and slows it down this is what air resistance is drag force suppose you have uh, a pencil and a feather which one is going to fall quicker and which one is going to fall slower yes you would see that the broad flat surface have the most drag that's why the feather it's uh, going to fall slower than a pencil and without air you know the two would fall at the same rate but because there is air there is is that drag force remember on the airplane we saw about the drag force so drag is affected by the movement of liquid and gases this is why uh, for example the planes if they can't fly into the wind uh, because the air is going to push the force is going to be too much okay that's why they mostly if you see the airplanes try not to land when there is or try not to land in the wind direction because it the drag force uh, there's a lot of air, there's will be less air resistance and that's why it will be very difficult for them to land out okay I'm coming to balance and unbalanced forces balance and unbalanced forces now in the beginning we saw, talked about the tug of war now what do you see here you see that this part of the people are applying the same force as this part it's 300 newtons and 300 newtons so are is there going to be any movement no right so when force act on an object without changing its motion they are called balanced forces balanced forces actually offer uh, often point in opposite directions and they always add up in zero for example you just subtract 300 from 300 and what's the answer zero so there may be more than uh, one pair of uh, balance forces acting on an object now the force is acting on sometimes for example uh, here this example of a clock use a screw in the wall because there is a force which will pull it down what is that force gravity but you had with the help of that screw it is staying in there right so balance forces can work on a stationary object such as this clock because it's not moving okay on the other hand it also 
Balance forces can also work on uh, moving objects, for example, this school bus. It is moving, although, but it is moving at the same velocity. There is no change in velocity. It's moving at the same speed, so it's balanced. If there is no change in velocity means the forces are balanced. Remember that. If there is no change in velocity means that the object is balanced. But on the other hand, unbalanced forces same example you see now 400 newtons and 300 newtons you see that this if there is a movement now there is a disturbance and this part is going to win it right so a force that causes an object to change its motion is called an unbalanced force so unbalanced force is there when there is a change in a motion after studying this, Sir Isaac Newton studied the balance and balance forces and he then wrote his first law of motion, right? Newton's first law of motion states that an object will be at rest or object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in constant motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. For example, you have a football here. It is staying at rest. Will it stay at rest? Yes, it will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force works on it. Right? If you kick it, what's going to happen? It's going to move. So, it is staying at rest. It will stay at rest unless and an unbalanced force works on it and then it you shoot it for example it will keep flying or keep moving unless an unbalanced force works on it right so anything that is at rest or even if it is moving right if it is at rest it will remain at rest un unless a balance unbalanced force works on it or if it's moving it will continue moving unless yes an unbalanced force works on it see this net is going to stop it right or maybe the air will stop it so this is what Newton's first law is anything at rest is going to stay at rest unless an unbalanced force works on it and anything which is in motion will stay in motion unless an unbalanced force works on it. Mostly uh, Newton's first law uh, is also sometimes called the law of inertia. Now this is because the law describes uh, inertia is actually uh, object that do not change their motion unless forces or unless it is forced to do. The same thing as the, uh, Newton's first law of motion that uh, anything tends to stay in motion at rest unless an unbalanced force works on it or anything which is in motion will stay in motion and unless uh, an unbalanced force uh, works on it. Now if there were no forces for example let us say there was no friction no drag an object will stay in motion and it could travel forever in a straight line such as the satellites and the planets do right but uh, because in the space there are no forces so the satellites and the planets they are they're moving in a straight line due to inertia nothing is uh, forcing them to stop or change direction but here on earth however we have you know, on the earth however we have friction we have drag force we have the unbalanced forces to bring objects to rest you you hit a football it does not keep flying away no it resists air resistance or drag force or even your by your hand you will stop it thank you for watching and uh, we'll continue in the next lesson uh, in the next part with the last part of this lesson